Okay, so it's Aaron Zeppelin Fat Boy Radio, aka Easy. I don't like to use AKs, but I feel like a hug bully sometimes. Yeah. But we're here with producer yeah. Half Amazing. Sir. So, yo, man, how come you get, like, why do you call yourself Half Amazing? Like, I would sometimes I'd be messing up, I'd be like, Half Man, Half Amazing. <laughs> what made you, are you not a man? Like, what's going on here? I mean, <laughs> it's just an homage to Nas. I remember uh, the name really came from, um, I was doing a, a remix. It's like early on, I was doing a piece of shit. I was doing a remix of um, It Ain't Hard to Tell. And I was like scratching up that part, you know, half man. Half oh, so you were DJ too? Nah. It was that virtual DJ. <laughs> it was virtual DJ or something. It was weak. Yo, man, I, mean, I was doing my show with virtual DJ. <laughs> I was weak, though. I was weak. But yeah, so that came up and I was like, you know, it kind of just stayed with me. Mm -hmm. Like half amazing. And it's like a hip hop mainstay, you know, Nas. Half African Asian, mm -hmm. you know, all of that. So mm -hmm. it kind of just made sense. So I was just like, all right, half amazing, you know, because uh, I do so many things. It's just like you know, black of all trades. Black of all trades? Yeah. So you're also a graphic designer. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I delve in the, yeah, yeah I delve. What's your price of like? I talk about off camera, off camera. Okay, because you know, <laughs> you know graphic design would be like front and hard buying nowadays. I'd be like, yo, man, I need you to do something. It'd be like $1,000. I'd be like, $1,000 for what? <laughs> like, I know you've done that. I know you've done that. Of course, you got to pay the bills. Okay, so half amazing, you're a producer. Yes. How long you been producing? Yo, since, shit. Freshman year in high school, so about six, seven years. Nice. Yeah. So, what have you been using to produce? Like, I remember when I was producing, and I was really bad. I was using like reasons and free loose and connecting that shit. Yeah, that's what I do now. Oh. Yeah, I started out on something called EJ. It's real bad, and everybody in school was using that shit. And everybody's beat started sounding the same. And then my boy, he told me, he was like, yo, you fuck with this free loose shit. I was like, what the fuck is that? And then uh, I went over to it. I was kind of good. And then I gradually went into pretty good. Mm -hmm. And now I'm um, very good. You're very good. <laughs> but yeah, so, so I man, but it's just like, I know you'd be using Fruit Loose and you'd just be like a uh, hip hop snare number nine. You'd be like, damn, fuck like one that. Fuck. You'd be like, nice that one though. Hip, yo, I fuck with you, man. It really is hip hop snare <laughs> number nine. <laughs> hey, that ass is hip hop. Now fuck with Knife. That's You know what? Knife is a real big influence on me just because he was one of the first niggas to actually like really claim Fruity Loops. Yeah. Because you know? back then, like Kanye was using Fruity Loops on some things and he, you know, you couldn't get him to say it. No, but I mean like listening to the music, I'm like hip hop snare nine. It's it's like, in like you drop it's in the drop down box, you was like, damn it man, you it's always using that same shit. It's, it's, and he doesn't try he doesn't try to like mask it or anything. Like, like, you don't try to mess with the pitch or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's his snare. That's his signature snare. So what like since so you're gonna be working with Noah Kane. Yeah. And how do you deal with rap ass rap like that man? Yo, I mean the thing is He's got the lyrical ability, which is you know very evident. But um, that's just part of my challenge as far as a project to bring something that you know everybody can really get to. Because you and I both know everybody isn't really into the rap, you rap thing, yeah. especially now. It's unfortunate, but sometimes you just got to be able to take the ability and mold it into something that everybody or most people can really you know. Yeah, because I know it's hard out here because like you know I be listening to Noah Kane, I just want to battle him sometime when I be listening to his music. I be like, yo, man, I got him. But when I see him, I be like, nah, yo, what's up, son? Yeah, I mean, but in my head, I be like, yo, man, if this was like 1990, I would just battle you at your show, like hop on the stage. I'm real with you. You might get. Then you produced that song like about the rappers taking girlfriends. You know, yeah. you produced that. Yeah. I fuck with you. That shit yeah. is disrespectful as shit. It's disrespectful, but that's real. I know that's, that's life. Like my girlfriend, if I had one now, I would never bring it to a rap show or even a producer show. Nah, producer show. I mean, producers ain't. Yo, good. producers be doing some shows. Producers do, yeah, yeah. They, they, they do. They, they do. You're not using an MPC, are you? Nah, I use so MPC once. Yeah, that shit's mad money, B. Yeah, I'm not really into the. I actually was in eBay one time, like bidding for that shit. I lost. We always like the computers. We all were there, but software. I'm really just software based, like a lot of the producers. Mm -hmm. It's just very, a lot more uh, accessible. Okay, so who's your favorite producer ever? Ever? Ever. It depends on some days I'm a some days I'm a Timberland guy, some days I'm a Neptunes guy, some days I'm a Ninth Wonder guy. Mm -hmm. I'll be honest. So how do you feel about the Timberland production on the Justin Timberlake album? Genius, man. Like I think it's really like he's really underrated. Like nobody and and not, he's not well, he's not underrated. He's just Never it's mentioned. Just, it, he's no, I mean in the producer community, he's kind of just it's kind of like an omnipotence. Like you kind of don't count him because he's been in the game for like since like ninety two. Yeah, for me, man. Yeah, a long ass time, and for him to be doing that by himself, and you know, I mean, Danger kind of helped him out. What about Mark? Har yeah. Is it Mark Harmon? Mark Harmon? Something Harmon. Like I saw that, I was like, there's some other guy that produces with him that uh, that sound just like him. Yeah, I mean that happens when you got a little understudy. 
Mm -hmm. But yeah, sometimes Timberland, especially with his transition game on the first Justin Timberlake joint, mm -hmm. it's kind of crazy. So he's a big influence. So you're gonna be working with Noah Kane on this whole rookie season. I okay. did the whole thing. So what was okay. your whole insight like in terms of producing these beats and trying to make everything sound different? Um, well, if you're a producer and you're you know worth you know your snare, like you are able to, you just have a sound. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, you you just rely on the sound to, to go on every on every beat you make. Mm -hmm. So you rely on that sound. So your job is to basically, you know, give him a softer record, give him a harder record, give him just you kind of have to spread yourself uh, all across the project. The project. Mm -hmm. So I mean, like I said before, he he has those very like uh, traditional hip hop records, and I'm like, yo, those are cool. Like I'm gonna give you those, and I love those records. But let's try to get you something that people haven't heard you on. Mm -hmm. and you're not gonna be able to give us any examples because I know this guy Noah came made you sign a contract. <laughs> I'd be like, Yo, Noah, what's the new single coming? You'd be like, Soon. I <laughs> keep it real with you. That's that's probably me actually just kind of influencing that too because I just don't. I wanted to be presented perfectly. Like I want people to get it when we want them to get. The music. In terms of presentation, you're gonna be graphic design on the whole project. I did the creative direction for everything in the visual direction. So what you looking like? Can you give me some clues? <laughs> like fill in spots. I mean, it's just expected to be very consistent. It's and gonna be like on a, on a, on a building. <laughs> it's gonna be like on a bridge. Nah, just just the street. Just subscribe. Just subscribe <laughs> to our Instagrams. You know, get on the Instagrams. And we're doing a, a really nice rollout. Talk about Instagram. That was some douchebag shit you did. What you mean? Like this guy said, "Oh, check out my shit." He put in a video option to Instagram. That shit was like ten seconds. I was like, "What the fuck?" Was I mean, with this? but. It's like going to McDonald's and getting like a fucking like a uh, like a little piece of a cheese, a little piece like cheese, <laughs> a little bit of a fucking cheese. You'd be like, this shit, the cheese is good, but what the fuck? What's the rest of it? You I mean, it's a thing, but you gonna want the rest of the burger, right? Yeah, I do. All right, so so <laughs> okay, man, we're still here with half amazing, and we're just chilling at the spot. You got a bucket hat. It's pretty I mean, cool. I was trying to get a bucket hat like for Afro Punk, and I failed. That's that's part of the uniform for Afro Punk. Is it? Yeah, Stussy. That's your favorite brand? No, I mean, they cool. They cool? Yeah, the fuck with Stussy. Cool. Oh, wait, is this Stussy or Stussy? I say Stussy, Queen's English. <laughs> <laughs> okay, man, so, like, how do you expect this product to be received by the public? Um, it's, it's, it just seems like a, it's a big demand for, like, New York rappers to actually do what New York rappers do now. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think when people receive this, they're not gonna, they're gonna hear a New York rapper and they're gonna hear that the guy got, he has flow, no has flow, he has lyrics and everything, but it's not gonna be like in a way that you can shit on it. Cause you know how a lot of people like try to shit on New York rappers now, like that's the cool thing to do. Or so it just Nike talk. It's, <laughs> Nike talk is Nike fucking, talk? Nike talk is fucking vicious. Them dudes is vicious, man. But I fuck with Nike talk, of course. You've been on this since like, what, 05? 05, 05. Is your name half, half amazing on it? Nah, 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 it's, uh, it's something it's just, it's, it's, Nah, it's something different. <laughs> I'll tell you. Those who know, no. Nah, is it a sick community or you just... Like, I remember when I was on Yahoo, I was an asshole. This is when I was younger. My, my shit was... And I was a big um, Hot Boy fan at the time. So I was like, yo, my shit is gonna be Hot Boy 3, 2 and 3, 5, 7. That's you? Nah, fuck with you. Yo, you really scared my ass, man. I remember what the you, fuck I did. I remember you from the Yo, you yeah. never used to be like in the chat room talking bad shit. Yo, all your niggas is Ruben pussy right now. I mean, that's just right of passage. Everybody do that shit on the internet. I used to and do that. Like, yeah. They'd be like, yo, Bob, ASL. <laughs> ASL. <laughs> in your chat rooms. Oh, uh, I used to be so scared. I was like, yo, I'm going to run into a pedophile one day or one of these dudes. Yeah. Yeah. What's Cold World or Yahoo chat rooms? Yeah, your life would have been a little different right now. Yeah. <laughs> you into that catfish shit? Uh, I watch catfish, I'm gonna be real with you. Catfish is the shit. <laughs> I ain't gonna like no catfish is the shit. Catfish is the shit. Don't get it fucked up. Yeah, but Twitter, like, how do you feel about Twitter with that shit, though? Like, when that shit is on, my whole shit is just blown up. I mean, that's just part of group thing, but in this case, luckily, it's actually entertaining. You know what I mean? Like, if you watch catfish, you, you kind of get sucked in. Are you trying to be on catfish? No, I ain't that. I mean, niggas, niggas don't Produce like a catfish, I'll be the beefy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's ghost producing, basically. How do you feel about ghost producing? Uh, it's a, a necessary evil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you got to use a lot of our favorite producers now just to get into get their name out there. And sometimes you need it just to even get out there. If you don't do it, then you're probably gonna be flipping burgers. Yeah, man. I'm not trying to do that shit. Nah, me neither. Nah, man. I can't do that retail food prep. Like, you know, I always felt like if I ever did retail, like some customer would ask me a question, I'd probably just pull out like AK-47 from my little pocket. And just we all, yeah, we all had that thought. I, I worked in electronics at Sears and Best Buy, I can't do it no more. 
Damn, you had the blue shirt on. Had the blue polo. <laughs> Did it fit in your size? You it, was, it, it fit. Nah, I'm, I'm a bigger guy, but they, 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 they hooked that up. They got that right. What was it, like a 3XL? <laughs> Damn, nigga. <laughs> Damn, dog, it was an XL, you know. Jesus. No, because yo, back I'm so happy that fashion is going the way that it's going now because like, oh, yeah, back yeah. in back in 03 B, I used to rock like maybe a 6 L B. That shit was did. like a dress one. We all did, we bad. all did. The five for twenty uh champs t shirts. Yeah, you know I struggled, man. Yeah. Like I was looking through my laundry, like my old bags of clothes, and I was like, God damn, how the fuck was I wearing this yeah, shit? Yeah, it was kinda no, this shit was fly. Yeah, I remember my first day outfit uh the skiing. I thought I was a shit. Remember Red Monkey? I had that shit came in I had red monkey. Or if I was my But yeah, I have to get back to you. Shit. Right, let's do that. <laughs> so, this is going to be your first project that you produce entirely? Um, not necessarily. I mean, for an artist that actually, yeah. I've done a lot of. Uh,